G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and I guess the Eagles corner for a specific look at the West Coast Eagles in the upcoming 2023 draft. So obviously been making plenty of draft content that's gonna increase uh, in between now and the actual draft taking place. And so for today's video, I thought I would do a separate video specifically looking at what I want from this draft from a West Coast Eagles point of view. And all drafts are important, it just feels like we're at a pretty critical point in our rebuild where we need to start nailing these picks. Uh, well, not start nailing these picks. I'm happy with the picks we've taken in recent years, but this just feels like a critical one, uh, particularly when you have pick one. Today's video is going to sort of be discussing, you know, what to expect from the draft, what I uh, what I think their strategy will be, and sort of what my own input on that strategy would be. Going to talk about uh, the sort of types of players that I hope West Coast are looking at in this draft, what I think we need. Um, I have done a previous video on this a couple of weeks or months back, I lose track of time now, where I looked at our list needs, um, but today I'm going to go into more detail with some more specific examples. I think so to start off, you know pick one There's not too much doubt who would be pick one in fact There's no doubt if we decided to take the pick now I guess to start off on that particular thread it does seem pretty much certain now that the Eagles have locked into Harley Reid. That was the uh, that was reported a few weeks ago. I think it's also really telling that um, not only has the deadline passed for uh, pick swaps that ended on November 10th So last Friday um, there can be live trading, but I think it's telling the fact that we couldn't come to an agreement before the end of that period. So there's two ways to look at that. You know, in, in a way, the, the later we leave it, in theory, the more leverage we have. I'm sure North Melbourne fans will think the same thing. But theoretically speaking, the best offer we're going to receive is when the clock starts on that pick one and uh, North Melbourne come with their final offer. Now, I'm not saying they even will come with an offer, but in theory, I'm guessing that's one way to look at it. Maybe we're holding out for the best possible offer. But in my opinion, from what we've seen in the media, there's too big a gap in between what West Coast want and what North Melbourne would be willing to offer and I think at this stage as well part of me thinks that West Coast probably don't want to do be the club that has the clock started on their selection Harley Reid thinks he's getting taken by West Coast only for a deal to be done I think in an ideal world there'll be some certainty about where Harley Reid is going um, that being said you know all draftees have a degree of uncertainty in previous years the first handful of picks have been the only ones really certain or have a degree of certainty about where they're going so in a way if Harley Reid doesn't know which club he's going to out of the two it kind of makes him like any other draftee but I'd like to think at this point we can give Harley Reid a degree of certainty unless a ridiculous offer comes across we are going to be taking him and I'm happy with that I, I have you know flop, flip flopped around different sides of the argument over time as you watch back on my videos I have been all over the place with what I hope and what I want to happen for, but any of the reported offers for pick one uh, from North Melbourne I would have rejected all of those as well so I guess at the end of the day I'm happy with this selection and we're going to get a very very good player in Harley Reid it'll be interesting to see where he plays at the next level because it would sort of depend on the club. I think if he ended up hypothetically at North Melbourne, they'd probably play him behind the ball in the way that Sheasel uh, played in his first year, even though Sheasel was drafted as a forward. Reed could be that distributor from halfback, get him into the game, build some confidence. If he starts as a defender, I think he probably wins the rising star. As a forward mid, it's probably a little bit harder for an 18-year-old to impact. But the Eagles may just see that, you know, he's got an amazing attributes as a potential one-on-one -on -one forward, even though he's only 6'2". Um, you could see him having a big impact as a medium marking type. Whether or not he's going to be strong enough to do it in round one of his first season, I'm not too sure. Probably, though probably will be. So I think we expect Harley Reid to present more as a marking option up forward early days at West Coast with stints in the middle before he eventually builds his tank enough to be a regular part of that on-ball division. So perhaps Hewitt and Reid kind of occupy opposite rotations, who knows. Either way, it's exciting, uh, but I didn't want to bang on too much about Harley Reid in this particular video. This is also a look broadly at what our needs are. And the closer I get to the draft, the more I feel very strongly that West Coast need to be taking Ideally, two talls, potentially just one in this particular draft. And just to be clear, a tall is uh, is a key position player. So not necessarily just how tall they are, but a player who is a true key position. The reason being, 2025's draft is um, at this far out. It is early days, but it's sort of suggested that this is going to be a very midfield dominant draft. So in a way, it's completely inverted from this year, which has um, a fair amount of talls in that 20 to 40 range. And it does have a lot of utility types halfback flankers, forwards, but it actually lacks pure midfielders. Whereas next year, specifically at the top end, it is jam packed with midfielders. So that kind of lends itself to a strategy of take your tools and your utilities this year and next year when there's gonna be plenty of midfielders on offer and you presume West Coast will have a high pick, they can afford to have another look at the midfield then. We've also drafted heavily for the midfield in recent years. So last year we took two first round picks that were both midfielders in Jinbi and Hewitt. 
Then you also factor in Campbell Chesser as a midfielder, more of a wingman outside midfielder, but a midfielder nonetheless. He was our first rounder the year before that. Took Jai Cully in the mid-season draft. I'm not saying our midfield is complete by any stretch of the imagination, but we have heavily invested in that part of the ground. So with the prospect of 2025 coming up, a year where midfielders are largely going to be on offer, it doesn't make sense to go midfield heavy in this particular draft. And so long story short, I want the Eagles to be looking at talls in this particular draft. It doesn't really matter where. I do think we have a need for a top end key forward. In other words, if we're going to draft a key forward, I'd rather it be an early pick. That's probably not going to be this year. So I think a key position defender, which there are a few available in this year's draft, is probably at least one box we should be ticking. The issue with this particular strategy we have going into this year's draft is I've done a number of mock drafts and PS, I have a mock draft coming out later today on the channel as well. But every time I do it, I find that by the time the Eagles re-enter the draft at what will probably be pick 29, a lot of the talls, particularly the key backs, are going to be off the board. So I'll name three that I think would be good matches for us. First one is Daniel Curtin, okay? So Daniel Curtin could go pick forward in North Melbourne. That's seeming decreasingly likely. Uh, he probably goes top 10. I think at this stage, he's probably a safe bet for top 10. There is a suggestion he could fall all the way to Adelaide, but I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case. Now, one suggestion that gets talked about online is potentially trading our future first round pick to get Daniel Curtin uh, with a top eight pick or whatever he's going to be in this year's draft. The pros and cons of that are interesting. You know, I think Daniel Curtin does project to be a good AFL player. I don't think he projects to be a true key position defender. I think he's probably going to be more of a tall intercepting roaming halfback. That doesn't mean he won't be very, very good and doesn't mean he can't actually match up on a key position forward, which in essence kind of makes him a key back anyway. But he's got offensive weapons and he's kind of earmarked himself potentially as more of a midfielder anyway. So on the one hand, does he have tall Bontempelli like midfield potential? That remains to be seen. It doesn't, I don't think he's quite as athletically gifted as Marcus Bontempelli, but he would be a great addition to our list. The problem with that is we'd have probably have to give up our future first selection and as it stands, we're probably the favorites for the wooden spoon next year. So essentially, we're taking Daniel Curtin with pick one of the 2025 draft. I think that's a bit of a leap. So in terms of some other key position options that I'd like us to consider, there's one from Claremont called Zane Zakastelski. Now, this guy's probably going to go in the top 25, potentially the top 20. There is a slight chance he lasts to pick 29. He looks athletically gifted and probably settles as a key position defender at the next level. Another one that's somewhat possible, but pretty much unlikely is Ollie Murphy, a key defender out of Victoria. So one of these three would be nice. I'm not advocating we trade a future first for Daniel Curtin. If we did trade a future first for Daniel Curtin, you'd really want to hope we shoot up the ladder. And I really, I wouldn't bet on that at this stage. So potentially taking Zach Estelsky or Murphy would probably be the outcome that I'm hoping for in this year's draft. I really wouldn't bet on either of them being available at 29. Now we have seen some suggestion in the media, I think it was Fox Sports or Fox Footy that reported the Eagles are trying to trade into the top 25 of this year's draft. Now, whether that's a future selection into this year and we keep our other remaining picks or we try and upgrade 29 somehow with some sort of sweetener, either way, that would be nice. And my personal belief is they're thinking what I'm thinking. A lot of the tools that they were probably going to be earmarked as suitable for us are going to be just out of reach if we stay at pick 29. So potentially trading a future second round selection, say Adelaide's on the board with peak 26 in this year's draft, or you know a Collingwood at 25, or even a North Melbourne. Uh, again, it remains to be seen which clubs would be willing to trade out of this year's second round. But you know, if Zach Ostelsky or Ollie Murphy are available on the board, I wouldn't mind trading a future second round selection because next year's draft is going to be similar to this year's in the sense that there's going to be a lot of academy players. In fact, it might even be the most we've ever seen, which means that if we have pick 19 next year, which is the start of the second round, we could see a scenario again where it becomes 25, 26. So 25 next year for 26 this year, like that seems worth it for me. In an ideal world as well, we do keep 29. So I'd like us to find a way to trade into that top 25 take an Ollie Murphy, take a Zach Estelsky, and then keep pick 29. Now, there are some other tools that I think are possibly going to be or more likely to be available at our selections. There's a couple of rucks. One of them's Taylor Goad, a 207 centimeter ruckman out of South Australia. And the other one's West Australia's Mitch Edwards, who has slid down the rankings now. I won't go into it. And to be honest, I don't even know the story, but there has been a suggestion. It's off-field related. What's making him slide? 
But we treated on face value. You know, he's still in Toomey's phantom form guides in the top 30 or so. And on talent, Mitch Edwards could be another Tim English. So yes, that would leave us with five rucks on the list. But, you know, Matthew Flynn, Bailey Williams, Callum Jamison, and Harry Barnett. Flynn's like 26, 27. So in four years, when Mitch Edwards is 22, he'll be 31. And I think that's a reasonable sort of transition period. Callum Jamison as well is far from a sure thing. And he's out of contract, I think, at the end of... No, I think his contract is 2025. So either way, we'd probably loading up on uh, with the extra ruck on the list but i think in terms of talent if they're good enough go to edwards they're appealing prospects to me some later options for for tolls um i'm maybe not the best person to analyze the later parts of the draft but a couple that come to mind would be will dawson he's a 200 centimeter utility that probably plays a little bit more key back than key forward and there's also jacob van royen's younger brother sam van royen from Claremont. He's only 193 centimeters, but he is a key forward. Again, he might be more of a rookie selection, but that's one option for us to consider with, we're going to have probably one of the last few picks in the draft as well. So those are the targets that I probably have in mind from a tall point of view, um, but we can consider some uh, non-tall options as well to balance out our recruiting hall. So what I would imagine what we'll be doing though, is if we're going to be drafting smalls or medium types, we're going to be looking for certain attributes. And I think there's two main attributes we'll be looking for. The first one is goal scoring power, because I think young forwards generally, well, I guess a key forward as well, but particularly medium to small forward options, I think we're a little bit light on when you look at like the second best 22 that we have, which means we just need raw goal scoring power, ideally a small crumbing forward. And if they're not a forward, if they're going to be perhaps a defender, we know that the club is pushing towards a game style, which is conducive to fast run and carry, creating overlap and good skill. Every good team is built out of good skills out of the back half. So we're going to be looking for those specific attributes. And therefore I'll throw up an example of someone like a George Stevens, the huge bodied inside mid probably doesn't fit our profile right now when you consider we've drafted Jinby, Hewitt, and obviously potentially Reed. Jai Cully as well, six foot four. So we've built a pretty big, powerful engine room. If we did take a midfielder, I'd imagine we'd be leaning towards more outside class and skill, which is probably a general list need anyway. So based on that general profile of what we'd be looking for in smaller to medium types, Lance Collard is one that I'm really hoping slides to pick 29. Again, on talent, probably goes top 20, but there's been a bit of a suggestion that he might be the homesick type if he leaves WA. I believe at the national championships, he returned home early. Could be reading too much into that. That is a, a genuine hopeful Eagle supporter who hopes Lance Collard slides to pick 29 because I think he fits the bill. He's sort of built similarly to Liam Ryan in a way. He's about 185 centimeters, so a tall medium marking option and when I say taller I just mean the, he's also quite a good ground level crumbing player so 185 centimeters is actually quite on the tall end but I think he fits the bill for what we're looking for there's Archie Roberts and Angus Hasty. Archie Roberts might slide to 29 Angus Hasty could be available at our third or fourth pick they're both fast skillful running defenders out of the back half and I think they seem like West Coast selections. There's also two GF. He could be available. Personally, I think it would require our second selection to take him. And that's where I'd probably be looking ideally you know, at a tall, if there's one available or a small forward in Lance Collard. But if 2GF does join our list, I think he fits the bill nicely as another defender with some rebound. And another one as a genuine forward who has slid so far in the rankings this year is Ashton Moyer. Now, Ashton Moyer at the start of the year was considered a top five prospect. Apparently played with a hip injury this year, but there's been questions on his application. There's a chance he goes undrafted in general, but with one of our last selections, I feel like this is a very West Coast pick. Again, another medium marking forward option, ambidextrous, kicks goals from long range and uh, makes things happen, but he can be inconsistent. So I think with a later selection, Ashton Moy to West Coast makes sense. He's also an Eagles fan, despite being South Australian as well, which is potentially why I've got a bit of a bias for him. But I think later in the draft, that makes sense. But a second or third pick, probably a little bit early for him. So after all that discussion of what, what I think we need and, and the types that we might need, I'm going to give you my ideal West Coast Eagles draft right now. Okay, so pick one, Harley Reid. That is, uh, that's locked in pretty much. or well, not locked in, but I'm happy to lock that in as my favorite outcome here. Then I hope at around pick 25-ish, we do take the punt on Zane Zakostelski. And what I mean by that is trading potentially a future second round pick to a team with a pick in the second round, be it Adelaide, be it North Melbourne, be it GWS, whatever. We offer our future second round pick and we get a top 25 pick to get our man Zane Zakostelski. 
already adding balance to this draft already. With our third selection, this is where I'm really hoping Lance Collard slides. I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility. I think it's possible. That is my ideal selection. So Reed, Zakastelski, Collard. At 39, I still think Mitch Edwards as a Ruckman could really, again, bring balance to this uh, to the force, bring balance to the draft hall. And uh, again, I, I feel like long-term our Ruck solution isn't quite you know sewn up. Bailey Williams is doing well at the moment, but Harry Barnett's a question mark. Does he become a key forward? Who knows? I would rather take the punt on Mitch Edwards at this selection. And that leaves probably our fifth selection. We can only take five max. At around about pick 46, this is where I think we can just go best available. And, you know, Angus Hasty might still be there as a running defender. Ashton Moyer, that forward that I was talking about, is potentially going to be there. And maybe Peel Thunder's Clay Hall as a balanced midfielder. Again, does he fit the bill of exactly what we're looking for? Probably not. But if he's still there at 46, then that is definitely best available. Then we technically have pick 57 after that if we traded a future second. So then I would probably trade 57 into the future. And we go into next year with a first rounder, a third rounder, and potentially two fourth rounders. But in a heavily compromised draft next year, you know, a second rounder isn't quite worth what it used to be. As we can see from this draft, we're entering the second round, the kicks off at pick 29. So for the sake of getting a young key position defender in now, I think that makes sense. And the, the benefit is when you're doing a rebuild, it makes sense to target talls relatively early. So we, we've gone pretty heavy with our midfield options. The general rule is that talls will take a little bit longer to develop than midfielders. So there's no real point in developing all our medium to small types and they're ready to go at 23, 24. And we just drafted our key position prospects four years ago and they're a little bit too raw to really impact. So it makes sense to sort of blend the recruiting in that way. And therefore adding a key defender and a Ruckman in this year's draft, I think is um, is an ideal outcome for me. But anyway, guys, that is my thoughts on what the Eagles should do at the upcoming AFL draft. Again, keep an eye out for my full Phantom draft later today. Um, I'm probably going to do one more before the draft and then probably I'll do one probably between day one and day two. Um, I think that will be fun as well. But let me know in the comment section what you think the Eagles should do at this year's draft. Who are some of your favorite young prospects? Let me know in the comments. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.